The demons of headaches? Is it possible many mental disturbances are actually caused by demonic activity? Let's talk about it. So I want to start off this video with a very simple verse. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What this verse is basically saying that your worst enemy is not the enemy that you can see, and your worst war is not the war that you can see, but it's the invisible, what you can't see. Because it's really difficult to fight a war and to fight an enemy that you can't see at all. And when the Bible says that we are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places, these high places are the invisible places you and I can't see, the things that happen on an invisible level. So two nights ago, I watched a very interesting video on spiritual warfare, and the guy in that video brought up a very interesting verse from a book known as the Testament of Solomon. So the Testament of Solomon is a pseudographical composite text ascribed to King Solomon, but not regarded as canonical scripture by Jews or Christian groups. So it's thought that this book was written in the first century CE. So it's a book that was translated and it comes from a body of Greek sources, which integrates the tale of Solomon's construction of the Jerusalem temple aided by demons with an encyclopedic collection of recipes for using and dealing with the demons in question. Now, I wouldn't put too much faith in this book. Number one, because it's not canon and it's not even apocryphal. However, the reason I brought up this book is because in the video, a very interesting verse was brought up concerning spiritual warfare in that book. And this is the verse that's found in the Testament of Solomon. And the Testament of Solomon, the Coney Bear translation from 1898. So I'm going to read to you the verse that the YouTuber brought up in the book that was very interesting. I am called Barsafael, and I use those who are subject to my hour to feel the pain of migraine. If only I hear the words, at once I retreat. So what this verse is basically saying that there's a demon that is able to cause migraines and other mental disturbances. And concerning spiritual warfare, I don't think this is that far-fetched. I want to talk about ocular migraines. This is actually something I used to experience every now and then. And I was experiencing this during a time when I was going through extreme disassociations. And some of you are totally unaware what disassociation is. Some of you might be experiencing it right now as you're watching this video, having no idea what you're experiencing because the feeling of disassociations like derealization and depersonalization is often very hard to put into words what it feels like. But I was going through some severe episodes of disassociations around uh, 2019, 2020. But, but anyway, I'm going to briefly explain to you what it means. So what is disassociation? Many people experience disassociations during their life. If you disassociate, you may feel disconnected from yourself and the world around you. For example, you may feel detached from your body or feel as though the world around you is unreal. Everyone's experience of disassociation is different. Disassociation is one way the mind copes with too much stress, such as during a traumatic event. Experiences of disassociation can last for a relatively short time, hours or days, or for much longer, like weeks or months. It was definitely months and months for me. If you disassociate for a long time, especially when you are young, you may develop a disassociative disorder. Instead of disassociation being something you experience for a short time, it becomes a far more common experience and is often the main way you deal with stressful experiences. I felt like my body didn't belong to me. It was like I was an outsider watching my own story unfold. When might I disassociate? For many people, disassociation is a natural response to trauma that they can't control. It could be a response to a one-off trauma event or an ongoing trauma and abuse. So there are two main kinds of disassociative disorders. One is called depersonalization and one is derealization, which I experienced severe versions of both for almost a year in 2020 to 2021. It was about eight months, so close to a year. Depersonalization is a condition where a person experiences detachment from his own self. Derealization, however, is a condition where a person experiences detachment from the entire world around him. So this is a perfect picture to describe what it feels like to disassociate or have disassociative episodes for short or long periods of time. It was long periods of time for me. It feels like you are living in a dream behind a glass wall or bubble. The world around you seems off. It's a very bizarre feeling and very hard to put into words. So derealization, it's a very like detached feeling. You feel completely detached from your surroundings. Sounds seem distorted, more muffled or much louder. When I was going through severe dissociation, sounds were very distorted. Everything was muffled. Things were much louder. Uh, when I would go through certain episodes, I'd go to a store, for example, 
everything just sounds extremely loud uh, it feels like you're getting sensory overload your brain for some reason starts to pay attention to every little sound from footsteps to everybody talking to sounds to music and it all just hits your brain at once it's a very like anxious frustrating type feeling um, objects or people look wrong blurry unfamiliar flat too big too small Feeling like I'm trapped in my in an invisible bubble like the glass wall I just told you guys about. Seems like a glass wall or veal is separating me from the rest of the world. Time seems to speed up or slow down or stand still. So for me, I had a very distorted sense of time during this time. Uh, time for me was flying by incredibly fast. A week was nothing for me. A week felt like what a day used to feel like. And I'm being very serious when I say that. I'm not even saying that in like a metaphorical sense. I mean like it felt like a day. Like I'll go to sleep, I wake up, and seven days pass by. And uh, it's a very distorted feeling of time. And just in general, the, the whole feeling, to kind of sum it up, it's just the world feels unreal, like a dream. Artificial, foggy, almost like a video game. And the interesting thing about disassociative disorders, many people experience emotional numbness. So you're not happy, but at the same time, you're not sad or depressed. You, you're not really feeling any specific emotion. It's like you're completely numb, like TV static. And I'll talk about in another video, like what probably caused this for me. Again, disassociating, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And I would go as far to say that sometimes it, it, it's, it can be worse than depression. And, you know, and people are surprised when I say that. I'm like, how, how, you know, how can there be anything worse than depression? Not feeling anything, any emotion, is, is I would say is worse than depression, at least in my opinion. But yeah, anyway, during this time, I experienced an interesting phenomena known as ocular migraines. It's not an occurrence that would happen 24 seven, but it would happen every now and then. It was rare, but it did happen during the time I was feeling very disassociated. So ocular migraine is an eye condition that causes brief attacks of blindness or visual problems like flashing lights in one eye or sometimes both. These episodes can be frightening, but in most cases they're harmless and short lived and the eyesight goes back to normal afterwards. So ocular migraine is an eye condition that causes brief attacks for blindness or visual problems like flashing lights in one eye. And it also causes severe pain in the eyes and hemicranial headaches with nausea and sometimes vomiting also. Ocular migraine sometimes describes a migraine aura that involves your vision. Migraine auras include a variety of sensations that are often visual. A migraine aura involving your vision will affect both eyes and you might see things like flashing lights, zigzagging patterns, blind spot, shimmering spots, or stars. Now the zigzagging thing is really interesting, especially if you guys have seen my zigzag dimension video. So when you get an ocular migraine, what ends up happening is you start to get a migraine and then it's accompanied with visual disturbances like flashing lights and, and the best way kind of to describe what it looks like is it's like kaleidoscope vision it's like tripping on acid seeing visuals and colors and flashing lights and zigzagging patterns and shimmering spots or stars but without taking any substances now some of the things that can trigger ocular migraines are stress of course hormonal changes flashing bright lights, abusing alcohol, skipping meals, which causes stress, or too much or too little sleep, which can also cause stress. But yeah, the main cause of ocular migraines is stress. The main culprit of these migraines is when you give into stress and negative emotions. Now, if you guys have seen my interview with a psychotherapist that believes in demons, when we give into fear, anxiety, stress, negative emotions, this opens up doorways to spiritual attacks. That's why the Bible says that a spirit of fear is not from God, which means it's from somewhere else. When we give in to this ungodly fear, we open ourselves up to spiritual attacks, which is exactly what I did when I was going through disassociations. And I truly believe that this was demonic oppression, oppression from spiritual parasites. Many of you watching this have went through this or are still going through this right now. The main simple thing to do when going through these mental disturbances is avoid things that trigger it such as of course very obvious negative emotions avoid stress avoid anxiety avoid giving into fear because as humans we love to feed the fire right when a little fire starts we start to feed it because it's really easy to feed into negative emotions but this is very dangerous and this opens up doorways to spiritual attacks like i was going through uh which is not fun to go through <laughs> let me know all your thoughts in the comments comment like share thank you so much and we are out